Welcome back to Tech Brews, I'm Andy. I have an affinity for Apple products. For the longest time, I thought they could do no wrong. I would defend them at all costs, make fun of Android users, use an Android phone for a few weeks only to take it back feeling like I proved a point to myself that Apple is a superior choice for anyone that knows anything. But something has shifted. Apple is having an identity crisis. Their phones look the same every year, but the prices stay the same. Their sales are dropping, and the other smartphone companies are starting to put the pressure on them, smother them a little bit with innovation, trying new things, being okay with swinging and missing, but at least trying. Samsung has been at the forefront of this takeover, making folding phones and flipping phones, adding bigger cameras, more features, etc. Not all of those things make it. Not all of them go over with the general public, but at least they're trying. And sometimes after all that public testing, they perfect one of their products. Which brings me to the Samsung Galaxy S22, I mean, S23 Ultra. So let's pretend the S22 Ultra never happened. And let's review the S23 Ultra like it's a brand new, never before seen phone. So I've been using the S23 Ultra for a couple weeks now, and I've been really enjoying it. Honestly, the list of things I like are way longer than the list of things I don't like. So let's get to it. The Ultra starts out at $1199 for the 256 gigabyte version with eight gigabytes of RAM, $1379 for the 512 with 12 gigs of RAM, and a whopping $1600 for the one terabyte version. God damn! It's powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 2 chip, and it's running Android 13 with Samsung's One UI. For me, it's been Samsung's best iteration of One UI. I've had almost no bugs to speak of. The only thing I don't like is the operating system and the preloaded Samsung apps have gotten out of hand. They take up over 60 gigabytes of space, which is ridiculous. That means if you buy the 256 gigabyte version, you'll be under 200 gigs before you even do your phone transfer. You can disable or uninstall most of them, but come on Samsung, do better. So with that in mind, I think anyone that is going to buy this phone and use it for a couple of years should get the 512 version. On to the design. I love it. It has premium written all over it. From the Gorilla Glass Victus 2 covering the front and back, to the armor aluminum frame that is said to be more resistant to dents and scratches than normal aluminum. I love the rectangle shape with the sharp corners. It seems like it might be easier to hold than other phones, even though this thing is huge. The front of the phone has a 6.8 inch Quad HD AMOLED display that has up to 120 hertz refresh rate. Let me tell you folks, nobody is better in the display game than Samsung. They've been making the best for years and haven't shown any signs of slowing down. This thing is gorgeous. From scrolling through social media to gaming, watching YouTube, or multitasking, it's buttery smooth, and I can't get enough of these high refresh rate displays. Multitasking isn't as fun as on the Fold 4, but at least it's an option, and it's a mostly satisfying experience nonetheless. With that huge display, the reachability isn't great, but it seems like I can reach most of it most of the time one-handed, depending on how I hold it, of course, which for me is the little pinky at the bottom of the phone propping it up thing. And no, I'm not a pop socket guy, I never have been. Maybe I could be though. Feel free to sponsor me anytime. Underneath the display is an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that has been hit or miss for me. It works about 80% of the time. I've added multiple scans of both thumbs and different fingers and it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. At the top of the display, there's a hole punch with a 12 megapixel selfie camera that takes really good self portraits. The camera is also used for facial recognition that seems to work okay, but definitely not in dark situations. I end up just typing in a pen or relying on the fingerprint scanner most of the time, unless my hands are dirty and I'm too lazy to pick up the phone. For an ultra phone, I thought this would be better. Maybe with some software updates, this will improve. At this point, I think we have to give Apple the award for best face unlock in the game. It works in the dark, the light, different looks, masks, sunglasses, etc. It's still secure. 
The volume rocker and the lock button are on one side and way up close to the top. The placement seems too high and backwards to me. Like I think the volume rocker should be under the lock button like the Pixel phones. When I go to lock the phone, I turn the volume down. And when I go to turn the volume down, I lock the phone. It's a vicious cycle. Something that would solve that problem is putting them on opposite sides of the phone, which is what I think all phones should do. One thing that keeps happening is the top part of the 5G antenna on the side keeps popping out a little. I don't know what that's all about. I just keep jamming it back in. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that is important to me and should be great on flagship phones are the speakers. I tell you, the speakers are really loud and they go head to head with the iPhone on sound quality, depending on what genre you're listening to. I think the iPhone does best with hip hop and rap and the S23 does best with rock or indie music. Either way though, they're both fantastic and I'm super impressed. On to the back of the phone. The back glass is frosted in one of the eight colors Samsung has offered for the Ultra. I've chosen the Phantom Black because of course I have. They have chosen to stick with the separate camera bumps instead of going back to the camera hump. I prefer the camera bumps over the camera hump that's on most phones these days. I think Samsung has done a great job with the placement and the look. Even with the larger sensors and the related tech, they don't protrude out as far as some other phones do. I'm looking at you iPhone 14 Pro Max. There's still some table wobble when typing, but definitely not as dramatic as that of the iPhone. Throwing a slim case on it will take care of all that. But I'm a no case guy. I want to enjoy the phone the way it was made, like God intended. Let there be caseless phones. Besides, isn't that why we buy the insurance on these things? So we can beat the hell out of them, or is that just me? It must just be me. Anyways, back to the camera. It's a quad camera setup flexing a 12 megapixel ultra wide with super steady video, a 200 megapixel wide with laser autofocus and OIS, a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, and a 10 megapixel telephoto with OIS. I think it's pretty obvious that the thing we tested the most was the 200 megapixel camera. The photos are fantastic. The detail, the clarity, and honestly, they might show too much detail. To the point where you can zoom in and think to yourself, man, is this what I really look like? Where'd that skin spot come from? Am I dying? I'm dying! Uh, maybe I'll stick to using that lens for landscape photography and use the others for portrait mode, which from the front and back cameras are amazing. And of course, the seemingly infinite amount of options for editing built right in to make your pictures all that you ever dreamed they would be. Here's some of the photos we've taken over the last few weeks. Oh, let's not forget the 100 times creep sauce digital space zoom, which is really cool and also frighteningly good. Which is a feature that I've had a lot of fun testing, but in reality it's just kind of creepy. Unless you're a private investigator and you need that shot of the cheating spouse with their side piece walking into a motel while you're comfortably stalking them from the coffee shop down the street. Or if you're on a hike, happen to spot some wildlife from across the creek and you want to zoom in to get a better look. Oh, did I mention that it also shoots 8K video? Yeah, it does that too. Plus super slow-mo, slow-mo, hyperlapse, director's view, and the list goes on. Everything in the damn kitchen sink, bruh. I think this camera system will hold up to the test of time, and at the end of the year, it'll still be at the top of the stack with the best of the best. Seriously though, this thing is a huge phone. You will definitely never forget it somewhere because you will notice that you don't have a really flat brick in your pocket. However, if I'm paying $1,200 for a flagship phone, I want to feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And even though I wish it were like $200 cheaper, I feel like it's worth every penny. And I cannot lie, I love big phones. Hmm. I love big phones. I love big phones. I like big phones and I cannot lie. Other techies can't deny. When a phone in your hand is super duper thin and a big screen in your face, you get sprung. Wanna show everyone and list off all the specs. I'm deep in the screen and staring. 120 hertz and there ain't no glaring. Oh baby, looking ultra. I wanna take a picture. Your mama tried to warn me. The screen you got makes me so nerdy. Oh, I don't need no case, man. I don't even need a skin. You say use me, use me, cause you ain't no iPhone mini. You see me texting. 
while watching Simpsons. I just spent a lot, so much money that I just ain't got. I'm tired of all the dweebs, say small phones are the thing. Take an average tech guy and ask him that. I need a screen that's fat. So techies, techies, does your phone got that size? Then swipe it, swipe it, swipe that big old screen. Little phones are whack. Onto the battery. The battery life has been great. I consistently end the day with 20% or more left in the tank. And I'm a power user, so I can drain a battery like nobody's business. Power user. What does that even mean? Oh, I get it, because I'm using power. I thought it meant I had some sort of superpower or something. Let's just say I use my phone like a teenager that's about to get it taken away from their parents for being on the phone too much. I literally used this thing from 7 a.m. until almost midnight and I couldn't kill it. I'm talking watching YouTube, leaving the screen on unnecessarily, phone calls, texts, streaming music, taking videos, pictures, you name it, and it was still alive. So between the 5,000 milliamp battery, the optimized software, and the efficiency of the 8 Plus Gen 2, you'll have plenty of battery left to get you through the day. Also, you know how much I love fast charging. It's not as fast as the Oppo, but 45 watt wired charging is enough to get you from zero to 65% in 30 minutes. So battery life is something you won't have to worry about. So last and certainly least is the stylus. It's very sleek, it's the same color as the phone, and it slides in and out a little slot nicely. That's what she said. And I love the button on the end because I'm a clicker and a fiddler. I have found in some cases where it's useful for me, like when I needed to make a note and I can't find my pen or paper around, or if I just want to doodle when I'm bored. But mostly it's just something I really don't need. It's cool, but I can take it or leave it. Let me know in the comments what you use your stylus for, and maybe I'll change my mind. I know it's early in 2023, but I think this is the best phone of the year. Even when we do the smartphone awards at the end of the year, I think it'll hold up with all the rest. Samsung has hit it out of the park with the best specs money can buy. So I give the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra an Andy Candy Bar style phone rating of 9.1 out of 10. The only downsides to the phone I see are the size and the price. Not everyone wants a huge phone like this, and most people aren't going to be able to afford $1,200 even on a monthly payment plan. Should you buy it? If you have the S22 Ultra, no. If you have the iPhone 14 Pro, no. But if what you're using is a few years old and you want the best specs money can buy and don't want a foldable, I would say this thing for sure. And if you do buy it, I think you're going to fall in love with Samsung all over again, just like I have. Because it's definitely a phone worthy of the name Ultra. It's going to be a sad day when I send it back. Thanks for watching. Make sure you tell your friends, your family, your kids, your uncle, your dogs, your cats. Uh, subscribe, like the bell, hit the bell, like the subscribe, now get out of here.